Yo, yo, my name is Eric Kinson and I'm here to say we're going backpacking in a regular way. Me and my girlfriend and a doggy too, we're going backpacking over the view. How was that? Was that all right? I just, I was just spitballing. What's up everybody? Eric Hansen here with Backpacking TV. Today I'm very excited to be going on a backpacking trip with my girlfriend Christy and her dog Kovu. We just left our van behind, had a nice little night camping up at a remote little lake. And we're going off for three days, two nights to what one of my dear friends calls the best view in Colorado. So if you want to see what that is, you better stick around and find out. Let's go backpacking. So we only just left our, our van like uh, 100 yards down the hill. And uh, I noticed that we're at, I don't know if you can see that, 10,800 feet and uh, breathing hard already. <laughs> we're gonna be following this decommissioned road for a while and then we are gonna be off on our own in the lonely wild of the Wiminooch Wilderness. Ready, babe? Ooh, that's the ready shimmy. So I've been looking forward to this backpacking trip for quite a while. I love the San Juan region of Colorado. It's truly spectacular. It's not very far from my home in Flagstaff, Arizona. You can get there in about six hours. And it's just so different than anything else you'd find in the desert. I mean, these mountains behind are just insane. And apparently, up and over this big ridge we're hiking up right now, just unveils some otherworldly views. So, super excited to be going back for a couple of nights of solitude out here. So in case you're wondering, we've been trying to work with Kovu over the last, well, year really, but especially in the last six months, to learn some specific dog training and trail etiquette. Uh, so we're working with him on healing and not just running off. Um, you know, in general out here, you want him either under voice command or on leash. And uh, so luckily Kovu's Implementing his training well, we don't have to keep him on leash, but he is right with us under our voice command. So thank you, Kovu, we love that. We are super close to the pass. Just have one little more rise to go up and over. And then, just came across a couple hikers who were raving about the views. I think we're in for a treat. Let's see. That's the last little bit right there. We're so close. How are you feeling? <laughs> 30 more feet. Oh, we're so close. 30 more feet. Let's do this. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Look at those babies! Oh my god! That's insane. Wow! That's a view and a half. Man, what a crazy treat. It's like a grand reveal. You're coming up over this kind of blank hillside, just grass. You come up and over. You see all that. That is stunning. Woohoo! Was it worth it? Oh my goodness, this is so good. Oh, it's. 100% actually a million times worth it 30 miles one way one way all in one day all in one day that was really intense I'm surprised I'm not like toppled over right now but wow wow
Well guys, we done did it. We found just about the most amazing place to go backpacking in all of Colorado. This is stunning. We're also up over 12,500 feet. Our intention is to find camp somewhere up here. There's supposedly good weather tonight. Um, so this would be a very exposed ridge if uh, the weather turns on us. However, there is opportunity to get down safely if it does come in, but I am so psyched on these views up here. This is insane. I did not know about this place. Sorry for my slow sentences. I'm having a hard time breathing, but my buddy definitely led me in the right direction. This is about as good a backpacking spot as I could ever ask for. Colorado, you win. Well, we've set up camp at a truly spectacular place. I'm very excited about it. And there's a couple of things about where we are that I thought might be helpful to discuss and point out uh, in case anybody here on the channel is uh, interested in camping in places like this. Uh, because as you can see, uh, we're just right here on a little bit of granite uh, rocky top that's uh, gonna be relatively flat. Uh, but what that means is that there's almost nowhere to drive a stake in slash nowhere to drive a stake in. Uh, so what do you do? So I'm gonna show you uh, here what I'm, what I'm up to. So when we're camping in a place like this, where it's all just granite, uh, you can see I'm using a lot of rocks. And, uh, and it's more than just piling rocks onto the corners. I'm doing a technique called building dead man anchors. And uh, so what a dead man anchor is, is it's something traditionally you might bury it uh, under the ground, like in sand or something like that. Um, but if you're on rocky terrain like this, you're just gonna create something that you've wrapped the edge of your tent around, uh, some twine, your guy lines, whatever it might be. And then you stack rocks on top of that. And then the rocks weight will, on top of your dead man will create the anchor. So let's take a look here. As you can see, maybe down here, I've got one rock that this edge of the uh, tent is actually going around. So this is my dead man. And now I'm just creating this stack of rocks here. And uh, if it gets windy, the weight of the rock is gonna keep that anchor down in place. And then basically same thing for my guy lines. Uh, I've just got them wrapped around these rocks that I can stretch out. And if you're curious, this is a bowline knot um, or a bowline. So very easy to untie, uh, which is very nice. I won't be fiddling with uh, knots for a long time. But as you can see, uh, all four of my corners and all four of my guy lines are just using dead man anchors and rocks. And then uh, we've got this open up right now, but then we're gonna do it again for the doorway using these rocks. So I hope that is a helpful tip. You can do the same thing if you're in deep sand and a tent stake will not do anything if it'll just pull right out of sand. You can bury sticks, you can bury uh, sacks, like dry sacks that you fill with sand uh, and then put those in the sand, bury those and that'll really help. Uh, but for up here in high alpine terrain where there's no, there's no, I would do it with sticks, uh, but I'm above tree lines, so there's no sticks to grab. So that's why I'm using rock. And uh, I hope that you found this tip helpful. And in case you're curious about what gear we're using, uh, I've got the Torchlight 20 degree sleeping bag from Big Agnes that I really like. One of the main things I like about it is this zipper feature that you can open up, expand, <clears throat> expand the mummy bag, and it's really, really nice. There's two of these that go all along there. And I'm pairing it with my Sea to Summit Ether Light Extreme. And uh, this is very robust on the insulation, which I think I'm gonna be thankful for tonight since I'm on stone and we're up at 12,600 feet. I think it might be a chilly night. Christy has got a marmot sleeping bag of unknown. Uh, we're, we don't actually, oh, maybe it says down here. Nope, we don't know. 
It's something from Marmot, a bag that I've got years ago, but it's actually still in really good shape and so it's really nice. And pairing it with the Q-Core SLX. So that is a really nice, very comfortable sleeping pad uh, that's 25 inches wide, which means together we will have plenty of room. These actually kind of line up really nicely together. And between the two of us plus Kovu, uh, and then some extra down insulation that's going to be Kovu's bed. Um, we are going to have a good old night tonight. So we've got a pretty amazing place to make dinner tonight, which there is one challenge with being in a place like this up on a mountaintop. Uh, where's the water? Uh, we actually had to go a long ways away, uh, all the way down there. Uh, not like crazy, crazy far, but you know, we're up at 12,600 feet, so going downhill is not very fun. Actually, going uphill is not very fun. <laughs> but uh, thanks to a YouTube commenter, somebody pointed out a, a thing I could do, and I've, and I've been trying it, and I've actually been really liking it. So I've been grabbing just a bag. This is my dry bag, and I just went down and grabbed a bag of unfiltered water from the source that's down there, hauled it up so that I can use for cooking, uh, dog water, Kovu can drink it, um, and then if I need to filter it, no problem, I'll just filter it. Uh, so that's a fun little trick, so I don't have to just sit down there for a long time filtering water. I can only filter what I need, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how I've been doing water for up at a mountaintop where there's definitely not water readily available right here. What's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying out these peak refuels, chicken alfredo pasta. Yeah, it should be good. These are super easy. I've tried them technically once before. So we've woken up for an early sunrise. It's just about 5 a.m. here in Colorado and we are being treated to a light show. It is spectacular going on behind us. If you ever wonder if it's worth getting up super early in the mountains, well, the current light shows that yes, it is definitely worth it. Got some lingering rain clouds out there. Hope those don't bother us later today, but man, this light is crazy. What an amazing morning. So fun fact about my girlfriend, Christy, is she is also a professional artist. Uh, she's been doing that professionally for seven or eight years now. And uh, when we come out here, she brings her sketchbook and she loves just sketching these landscapes. And it's so cool to see what she's able to capture uh, just in the moment uh, on, on all these places. So that's something that I love about her and I hope that you get to see what she's up to creating out here today. So I didn't think backpacking could get any better than our last trip that we did together in the Wind River Range of Wyoming. And this place has just skyrocketed to the top of my list of favorite places to go backpacking. It is staggeringly beautiful here. There is so much to explore. We're just in like one small little nook of what the Rockies or really the San Juans here have to offer. And I am just in love with this place. It's got so much changing light and beautiful and it's got this inviting energy that we were talking about a minute ago that I just love. Uh, and yeah, now I'm just gonna go stare off at the sunset. So now we're going to, well, for a little bit, we're gonna just sit and enjoy the spectacular morning scene, but now we have to tear down camp, pack up, and make our way up and over these mountains 
back to the trailhead, back to our van, and uh, we're gonna call this one a proper adventure. Goodbye, world's most beautiful campsite. <laughs> well, the time has come. We are just setting off from camp. We've got a little bit to go down to the lake, and then the hard stuff happens. We've got to go all the up, way up. Up, up, up. Super yep. steep. <laughs> Super steep. It's going to be a big challenge, but uh, yeah, it'll be like the final push of the day, because then after that, it's just whew, downhill cruising for miles and miles. You ready for the up? Oh my gosh, yep. Let's go. If you have thoughts on this place or you have special memories of your favorite campsites, I'd love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments below. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for sticking around. If you enjoyed this video, please give it that thumbs up. Make sure that you are subscribed here on the channel. And uh, we're gonna leave you with this spectacular view while we finish our hike back to the car. Later, everybody.